Hey guys, it's Napoleon the Aphromite and welcome to the Skinwalker. Z is the action, hold shift to move faster. Uh, this is a game I played a while ago. And I kind of liked it and I wanted to record it and I never ended up doing that. So, but now I don't remember how the game goes. All I know is that it's about a skinwalker. Or I think they're more commonly known as flesh gates now. So, the following story really happened. I saw it with my own eyes. Maybe it didn't happen as I saw it, but more on that later. We're all going out camping, me and three friends from uni university. Let me introduce my friends. Nice zoom in. Mode 7. That's Darren. I wouldn't say he's their group's... Uh-huh. Or actually, I would. He's at... <laughs> I wouldn't. Actually, yeah. He's the one that always gets us out of the house and into action. He's the first one that... Hit on the cute girl by the bar. He's the first one to jump up from the roof into the swimming pool. According to himself, he was even more impulsive when he was a kid. Hmm. I can only imagine his childhood. And now, often as he must have broken his leg, scraped his knee and his head. Hit his head? Was that what it said? Still, if it weren't for Darren, we wouldn't have the same amount of fun we have. I'm gonna pan over? Yeah, we are. Or that's more a uh, truck over. Or what do they call that? I don't remember the term where it's like not pan or pan is when it go when it you move when you rotate the camera horizontally whatever when the camera moves side to side and up and down it's called a truck or something like that I can't remember this girl Celeste we've known each other since we were kids we met each other when we moved the husband hmm. I can't read apparently my mom told me okay Nice girl, although her health isn't the best. She has some kind of health problem. This forced her to be away from school during extended periods. Because of this, we all, until we started university, I was her only friend. So she never complained and I always seemed her in the positive. In the positive. Next is me, I'm Joe. As the name implies, I'm pretty normal. Yeah, you're the average Joe. Don't be dissing the average Joes now. I don't have any overwhelmingly bad qualities, but on the other hand, I don't have any overwhelmingly good ones either. Live in the apartment for a short walk. A short walk from university. Uh, that's where we hang out. This is, this is Michael. Neighboring. He's my neighbor. Mm, I can't read. He's my neighboring. Yeah. One day, while well, I had Celeste over, he just barged in. Hey man, your place looks nice. Mind if I join you for dinner? He says. As you can imagine, he's pretty pushy. I don't think he realizes it. He came over several times after that day. After that, we somehow naturally became friends. By force, apparently. Ooh, trippy chirp. So one day, Darren came up with the idea that we should go camping. Darren said his family had a cabin a little bit into the forest. So camping, we went. It'll be fun, right? Of course, me, Michael, and Celeste disliked the idea of staying in a cabin. It's a camping trip. We have to sleep in the wilderness. And there's no Wi-Fi. So you can't watch... Netflix. So Darren told us about the woods near the cabin. I don't remember much about the trip to the cabin. We joked around, had a few breaks, normal stuff. Normal stuff, I'd say. Either way, we drove up to the cabin and left it there. Took a short break in the cabin and set out into the wilderness. We went pretty far in. I can't say how far in the distance exactly, in distance exactly, but it took several hours to get where we had set up camp. First day was we just screwed around. Nothing abnormal happened. But then the character models are interesting, to say the least. Uh, who's this? Hello? I guess he's asleep. I guess he is. Those are supposed to be Z's. Did you sleep well? I guess I did. Morning, Dare. Should I say good afternoon? Fix us up some wood for a fire, will ya? Our, I set out to gather wood for a new fire and water to cook with. Well, I could have done that. You didn't need to walk me there yourself. That tree looks weird. So does that. Okay, not not so much when there's other ones around. Sorry if I keep. Looking down, my uh, little laptop that I have is down in the corner, or not normally where I have it. 
I'm trying a different little little bit of a different setup, and so I'm checking to make sure everything's still running nicely. So anyway, uh, what's that sound? Doesn't sound like anything you'd hear in a forest. I didn't hear anything. There we go, a bucket of water. I don't hear anything in particular. That sound stopped. My head hurts. Take an aspirin. Quit complaining about it. Should have enough wood to make fire. Wait, did he say enough wood to make a fire to last through the night? I thought we just woke up. Uh, poured water into the cooking pot. All right. Let's cook something up. Okay. Excuse me. Later that evening. This is just kind of jumping around all over the place, isn't it? What are the scares, man? Oh, I'm playing. Okay. It's time to go to sleep soon. We're all out of booze. Shame. Guess we have to go back to town tomorrow. I'm not looking forward to that four-hour trek. Maybe we shouldn't have gone so deep in. Haha. <laughs> maybe, Michael. May maybe. Yeah, what do we got? Anything good? What is up with this fog? Every time I've been here before, there hasn't been any. Really chilly outside for being in the middle of summer. Hey, that happens. It happens sometimes. It gets cold. Hey, anyone else hear that sound? I thought that was just like dissonant ambient sound effects. Oh, criminy. That hurt. Now that you mention it, yeah, what is it? Sounds like something metally. I think metallic is the word you're looking for there, but... Metally? Is that even a word? Hey, you know what? Shut up! It's a word if I say so. Mmm. Calm down, kids. Don't make me and mom separate you. Stopped. Maybe it was some kind of machine. It's Baraska! Who would go out in the woods and near a civilization in the middle of the night and start revving up some kind of weird machine? Who cares? It's probably someone using a chainsaw. Oh, that's, that's real, you know, comforting. It's in the middle of the woods and it's different than normal and maybe a chainsaw. I want to check it out. Shouldn't go out too far. It's evening and I don't want to get lost walking in the dark forest. Okay. I can't talk to her from there. That's weird. I'm sure that was no chainsaw. I wonder what it was. No, no, no. Let's go to bed. Sleepiness soon overtook everyone. Uh-oh. Wait. Why are we in... Th Second person now. We were in first person and now we're in second person. So the narrator has changed. To an external entity. Is now narrating. You stumbled outside of your tent. Oh, that's never a good idea. Quit that skr 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 skittering at it. The mist is even thicker. You can't see much. I don't want to go. Well, you know what? I'm going back to bed. No, I'm going back to bed. Nope. 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 Going back to bed. Going back to bed. Fine. Oh, no. Stop. Stop. Stop it. Oh! It's a thing! It's a thing, Michael, is that you? Say something, will you? Who are you? Oh, no! Do you stay away from me? I have a knife! Come here! 
Woo! Keep going. He's after you. Is he actually chasing me? I hope not. No, I don't think he is. Hey, wake up! There's something outside the tent! What? Uh, I'm sure there is. Lots of squirrels. Go back to sleep. Hey, is Michael here? Yeah, I'm here. Why wouldn't I be? I don't know. The thing outside looked like... No, it didn't. It was a black silhouette. Did not look like Michael. Probably some animal that, I guess, looked like Michael. I don't think we have to worry about a fox or whatever. Take it easy. Go back to bed. Why don't... Why? Okay, hang on. Why is why are we leaving the door flappy do to our tent open especially after we saw not michael these are the questions that keep me up at night folks but the sounds and he's gonna try that a few minutes later. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. It wasn't me. Mm -mm. Well, now I'm gonna never going to be able to sleep. Oh, you don't believe anything is out there. What if it's some crazy psycho with a chainsaw? What if? All the more reason to check it out. It's not like the tent's some kind of impenetrable fortress. It'd be a little better if you had the door shut. Oh, it's not funny anymore. Boo! Ah. Uh, check it out. I'm not going alone. I get you. I got you. I got you. I did. Don't deny it. The heck is that? Something was definitely here. Calm down. It's four against one. I'll be fine. What if the dude's got a weapon? I mean, it killed a little critter. What is, it? what is that? My window's too small. I can't really see what that is. It's the middle of the night. What about our stuff? Screw our stuff. I'm not staying here another minute. Fine, we'll leave, but at least bring the flashlight and some food and water. I think you're overreacting. No, we haven't seen anyone. I did. I saw someone, and you, Jackbutts, didn't believe me. We can't exactly go to sleep, back to sleep with no worries. I guess you're right. Let's go get the flashlight. Everyone bring some stuff you think we might need. A couple minutes later. Alright, let's go! What is that? Hello? Hello? What are you? I don't know what it is. Is everyone in my party? Well, not Michael's gone. Not Michael. That's what we're calling him. It's so dark. At least it's still summer. It's not pitch black. The fog is over. Why is the spotlight moving? It's like rubber banding. That's weird. Oh, hi, sir. I see you over there, friend. Quit giggling like a fool. It's weird. A while later, it became obvious Darren had no idea where we were going. We're back to first-person narration, by the way. He was swearing and looking all around. We've been walking for an awfully long time now. Are you sure we're going on the right path, Darren? I've walked this path hundreds of times. We're on the right path. I don't recognize anything from when we were walking to the camp, though. It's like I said. I said we were on the right path. Well, Darren, calm yourself down. It's okay. But as time went on, it became obvious that Darren had no idea what, what we were, or where we were, or who we were, even. We just all lost our minds and succumbed to not Michael. Not, not Michael. Either way, we're lost. I kept looking behind me. It was super sure, 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 sure. 
I nearly tripped over Celeste when she fell. Okay, I remember this. Help her up? I remember this part. I remember... Oh, that's a soothing sound. Here, I need to move my timer. I gotta move my timer. Help her up! I took Celeste's hand and dragged her to her feet. I was getting even mistier. It's not for the flashlight. I would have had no idea who she was. I recognize that tree. We're getting back to Kevin. Someone was watching me. My gut was screaming something was wrong. I realized it sounded familiar. It was back soft but still present. I started looking around and panicking. Ha! Ah, I'm mentally, I'm physically preparing myself. I know there's something going to happen. I did a head count, or more accurately, accu accurately, a silhouette count. Me, Celeste, still holding my hand. Darren in the lead, Michael to my left. Who the heck was the guy besides Michael? It was not Michael. My grip on Celeste's hands tightened and I quickened my pace. I thought about shouting but out, but was worried. If I did, maybe the thing would turn around and jump Michael or something. I didn't know what to do. I ran my fingers along my knife I brought from camp. Then the cabin appeared out of nowhere. The mist was starting to disintegrate around us. Is this exciting or what? <laughs> it was easier to make out who everyone was now. I looked at the thing standing next to Michael. She looked just like Celeste. The thing whose hand I was holding leaned in front of me. Okay, here we go. It wasn't Celeste. There she is. Pretty face. I should have ran or screamed, but my body was clenching up for no... That was actually not as bad as I remember it. The thing turned and walked into the mist. Ugh. Caught up with others as they entered the cabin, practically in tears. They couldn't find the car and were arguing about where we put it. <laughs> oh, that's if if it's not there, and no one else moved it, I I think it's gone, guys. I told them what I saw. Obviously, they didn't believe me. Still, everyone hurried inside and locked the door. Go away. This reminds me. He followed us here. He really wants something from us. He doesn't seem to have any. Anything to break it down with. Don't down down door with. <laughs> what does he want? Ask him. Hello. No. Screw that. Did he go away? Oh, I can I can really just say bump that noise and. Hi. But he can't get in. Well, I don't know. Did we have an electronic lock on the door? Just trying to scare us. Take it easy. Oh, there's nothing out there. Couple of books and a board game. Hey, who wants to play Jenga? Bench made out of big tree trunk. Table? Celeste? Oh, she's current. I'll talk to her in a second. I want to. I want to explore. It's like Kadeker said. I just want to explore. Exploring is fun. I want fun. Various tablewares. Oh, who's that? I don't know, but they got a pair of sick pair of heelys. They kind of. Eh. 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 Uh. 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 Okay. You're not who you say you are. We're safe here. It's cool. No, it's not. You did not come down here. You did not go down there. You're still here. Aren't you? Okay, maybe you did. You saw something that looked like I, I walked through you, through you. Better not touch it. Okay, well let's. Oh, we don't have matches. Fuel. I think that's called wood. 
fuel for a fireplace. I put a strong sense of nausea hit me. There was something in the air. I could feel the horror overtaking me again. Bum bum. And then the acid kicked in. Hello? Girl? Ah. <laughs> Hello? Raggy! Raggy! Light! I don't know. Maybe talking like Shaggy will help me feel better. Like, oh no! I don't feel so good. I wouldn't either if I was having a seizure. Who is barfing outside? Like, seriously. Ooh. I can't get up. Is there nothing useful anywhere? Nothing? Who? Stop. Better not touch it. Well, what do I do? Yep, 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 yep. Do we... I had to lie down. I couldn't sleep and I would have even if I could. I looked out the window. Hi, Billy. Raggy! <laughs> Quickly pulled the blinds down. She looked pale and disheveled. Dragged her to the bed and laid her down. She was gasping for air. Uh-huh. She, she shrugged. The room had stopped spinning. That was some good... That was a good hit. Hello. What's worse, though, it wasn't the voice of Celeste. Let me in, let me in. Uh, immediately pulled the knife and placed it at the Celeste lying in the bed. Her eyes grew wide in shock and alarm, but that could have been fake. What are you doing? No, I'm the real one. That one out there is the imposter. I was kind of in a trance, unsure of what to do, staring down at her. Maybe I would have stabbed her if the voice at the door hadn't changed into some low, deep, guttural voice. Then it became high-pitched like a little girl as I pulled my life away. I snapped out of the trance. Now the nausea was returning. Got to the door and opened it. Why? There was nothing there but a trail of black liquid. Well, you know what they say. Wait, really? Am I? Can I? Can I really? It was fighting me, and I thought I was just being a goof. Oh, no. Let me in, let me in. Immediately pulled the knife and placed it on the Celeste in the bed. What? <laughs> no. Let me through. I want to go down this way. Am I glitching the game? Where's everyone else? A bunk bed. Oh, fine. I think I glitched it. Got this feeling that it might not be the best. No, don't go outside. Decide not to go outside. Ugh. Bump that. Got the sinking feeling like something was seriously out of place. Well, I mean, someone died over here. He was shot to death. How did I know? Just a feeling. Didn't hear a gun or anything. Man, blocking my window view. Couple of books and board games. I'm waiting for one of those these times for something to jump out when I do that. Oh, Celeste was dead. Looked like she had been shot. Recently shot to death, and Darren was lying on the floor. From a shotgun? Who shot a shotgun? Well, uh, no. The shotgun, how tempting it had been. It had been looking for the right moment for a long time. 
The right moment for what, you ask? Why, the right moment to kill my friends, obviously. What else? <laughs> That's the obvious answer. The shotgun, oh, how tempting you had been. I just had to do it. Always taking me for granted, those buggers. Just because I'm nothing special, this should teach them not to mess with me. Bad end. So if I don't go outside... If I don't go outside... Then I kill my friends? Is that it? Is that how this works? I... That's how this works. Okay. So, what I did is I'm playing through again, and it's the first choice that I can make. This time, I'm not going to help her up. We'll see what that does. Uh -huh. Walking, but okay, she's so she's walking beside me now. Yeah, okay, so nothing really different there. Maybe I answer the door this time. Someone get the shotgun. What? Get the shotgun. Well, that's different. Shoot, he'll kill us. Shoot him. What? Shoot, shoot now. My goodness. It was Joe. The Joe outside the door was the real Joe. Oh, no. That's a bad ending, too. Be sure... Okay, the, the thing to take away from this... Be sure to help a girl up if she falls down. Even if she's a monster in the woods. Remember. Okay, so... This time I helped her up. And I'm going to answer the door. not answer okay so yeah I was right he never followed he stayed up here ha uh ha -huh. got this feeling it might not be a good idea go outside be brave be a brave boy I'm a brave boy. There it was. An albino man with really long limbs had fingers instead of toes, and all 20 of them were elongated. He was facing away from me. Suddenly, the head swiveled 180 degrees and stared at me. I started choking up as if suffocated. It was hard to breathe. The thing opened its mouth slowly, deliberately. I thought he was going to devour me when the tongue snaked out. On the tip of its tongue was my face. Like, uh... Eyes closed, lip... Psycho smile. There's a legend that says when you see a doppelganger, you die. I thought of the legend. But then the creature rounded the corner and was gone. I lost it and followed, vision hazy. My heartbeat suddenly seemed ear-splitting to me. I was stumbling because my legs seemed unable to coordinate. Suddenly, I stumbled forward and toppled down. Once I lay there, face down on the grass, my body just seemed to shut down. I couldn't move. I couldn't even turn my head. There was something dripping on my back. My eyelids seemed heavy and started closing of their own accords. I see white, long fingers and toes step into view. One of my eyes opened up. Celeste was shaking me. She was on the brink of tears and her voice was cracking. Get up, get up! He was in your skin! 
My head hurt. I was about to ask her what happened when she started pulling me backwards towards the door. We toppled out and stumbled inwards towards Darren's car, which was parked in a different location from what I remembered. I was glad to be alive. The mist had stopped completely. Celeste was downright crying now. She pushed me into the back seat. That's when I noticed. I was wearing different clothes from when I lost consciousness. Michael was there, huddled up and face buried in his knees. Same clothes, stained with blood, were beside him. They were mine. Darren immediately stepped on the pedal, but nothing happened. He swore and did it again. I noticed that Celeste was armed with a shotgun from the cabin. I asked him what was going on. That thing joined us. He looked like you. And we got we got out of the house and found the car. We were halfway down the road when Michael started screaming. I looked at Michael and he had a glazed over look in his eyes. The thing burst out of your clothes and jumped out of the car. Michael had the shotgun. He was firing out the window. We saw the thing run all the way back to the house at the friggin' speed of light. Was it- it was in my skin? Yeah. I looked down at myself. I wondered if I had been possessed or if worse, the thing had cut off my skin and wore it as a coat. I shrugged and thought of something crawling around in my skin. I asked Michael if he was alright. That thing talked to me. I asked the, what about. He didn't respond. I realized he was sobbing. The car jolted into motion. Darren fist pumped as the car started accelerating. I turned backward towards the cabin and saw the albino thing standing on the roof of the house, watching us. I shuddered and turned back. Celeste screamed. Ah! The thing was in front of the car on the windshield. It opened its mouth and the, my tongue face slithered. My tongue face slithered up. Celeste fired the shotgun. The glass shattered and was thrown backwards. Darren shrieked and saw blood coming from his face. Something pierced my face and realized I was, it was glass. This car skidded to a stop. The car's door was opened without any discernible reason and I fell out. The thing lay directly across from me, eyes closed as if it was sleeping. I wish I could close my eyes. The thing's mouth hung, its mouth hung open and I saw myself again emerging. I didn't move or say anything because I couldn't. My face looked at me and I stared back. And it started to talk. I love you. I love you. I want to be you. I repeated over and over again. It was coming close to me. I wondered if it was going to bite me to death. The thing's eyes shot open and I realized I was going to kiss me. I managed to regain some control and instinctively... I whisked back from it? I guess that was what saved me. There was a sound like an explosion and blood sp spouted from the thing. Celeste was standing over it. Her face and body were bleeding and she just had this spaced out psychopathic look in her eyes. She just fired the shotgun. My face looked directly at me. I am you. It was she fired again and I saw my own face beginning, begin rolling, rotting into nothing more than a skeleton in front of me. Things head flowered open. Jesus, this text is hard to read. That's the best word I can find to describe it. Its head kind of split and split again, peeling away. I saw faces, lots of them, all on the inside of its head. I think I saw Celeste and Michael's face. They were whispering something unintelligible, unintelligible. At the center where the brain should be, there was a single red cat-like eye that was rotting, rotating at its socket. It was producing the mechanical droning sound. Celeste fired one last time at the thing. Time. Oh, that's creepy. The thing sort of withered away, becoming wrinkled and smaller and rotten until it just disappeared. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Celeste dropped the shotgun. I started twitching and spasming as control of my body returned to me. Eventually, I stood up. We got into the car, silently. Darren was bleeding too, but no one said anything. We drove back to the city in silence. We explained it away the damaged car is being attacked by some crazy thieves. We had ourselves patched up. Michael was still in a shock-like state. I hear he was like that for a while. When I asked him what he thought of the incident later, he denied it ever happened with compelling conviction. His eyes looked dead, and he lost weight. I don't know if he forced himself not to remember, or if he genuinely knows nothing of it. I know what I saw, but I can't remember the exact place. It had been two months now. We still were 
refrain from talking about it. If you were expecting some huge twist or something, you're, you'd be disappointed. I still don't know what we met out there. I don't want to know, actually. It still gives me nightmares about my own face shouting, I am you. I thought it whispered. One thing I do know, though, is I'm never going camping again. Crazy psycho stalker me. Let's not meet again. So there we go. That was Skinwalker. Woohoo. As good as I remember it, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, I know it was a little more crazier than normal, but, you know, make do with what we got. So, anyway, it's been Napoleon the Aphromite, and I'll catch you all next time. Mm -hmm.